Okay, we are live. Okay. Good morning, everyone. I am Ovishak Roy, Assistant Professor of the Department of Civil Engineering, Bengal Science Institute of Technology. Along with Professor Sourav Pal of our department, will conduct today's webinar, which is on Spectrum Civil Engineering today. I, along with Professor Sourav Pal, take the opportunity to welcome you all on behalf of the department. Now, I request our HOD sir to say few words. <clears throat> Hello, everyone, and very good morning to all, and welcome to today's session of our webinar series. The Department of Civil Engineering, Bengal Science Institute of Technology, launched a webinar series in the name of Spectrum Civil Engineering Today. It will be conducted weekly basis, and today is the first week, so we are very excited to start the session. We will try to deliver it and introduce a uh, few updated and modern techniques in different civil engineering fields beyond the curriculum in this pandemic situation. So first of all, I had like to welcome to our organizing committee members, which include faculties and technical staff, but especially Professor Obisek Roy, Professor Saurav Pal, Professor Priyabhata Guho, Professor Shagota Bishoi, and Professor Bishoi Thakur, to organize such an essential webinar series within such period. I, I, I like to welcome and thanks to our honorable principal, Dr. Ankur Ganguly, who not conduct this wonderful session. I would also like to welcome from our department to Dr. Pita Maich, Associate Professor, Department of Civil Engineering, Jadapur University. Very much thanks to him. He has agreed to give valuable speech apart from his busy schedule. Hope the participants will get benefited enough from his lecture. And he is offering a wonderful topic, road traffic safety, social and engineering perspective. We are very happy to note that we are about 330 participants join here for this session from different institutes like NIT, IITs, Jadavpur, IIST, etc. It will motivate us obviously to organize such webinar in future. I wanted to know heartily welcome to all participants from the Department of Civil Engineering and Science Institute of Technology. Again, I want to tell that we are organizing live webinar series. First session of the first week is presented today. We are trying to bring various experts from the different academic and industry to share and introduce the new things to civil engineering field. We will be get in touch with our committee members for further joining to next program. They will inform you on time in this regard. If you have any query or specific question during the presentation, please type them into the appropriate place mentioned by our execute, executives. We will bring them to our honorable speaker at the end. Thanks again to our organizers. Thanks to all of you for joining us and hope you will enjoy the session. Thank you all and wish, you, wish the successful conduction of this session. Now, I had like to request Professor Obisak Roy for going ahead and for operating the rest of the session successfully. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, sir. Uh, now I am requesting Professor Biswajit Thakur, Professor of our department, uh, to introduce our speaker. Sir. Good morning, everybody. It is my immense pleasure to welcome you all to the first session of this live webinar series entitled Civil Engineering Today, Spectrum Civil Engineering Today. We are delighted to have amongst us Professor Dr. Pritam Aich from Department of Civil Engineering, Jadavpur University as our honorable speaker for the first session. To introduce him, he has graduated from Civil Indian Department, Jadavpur University in the year 1994, done his master's from the same department in 1997, later worked there as a senior research fellow and completed his PhD in 2013. He started his academic career 
more than 17 years ago when he joined Jalpaiguri Government Engineering College with Meghnatsha Institute of Technology and later he has been working as a faculty member in the Civil Engineering Department of Jadavpur University since 2005. His area of specialization are geotechnical engineering, transportation engineering, remote sensing and geographic information systems. His present area of research are pavement engineering, traffic safety, planning and management and disaster management. Today, he is going to deliver a very important and pertinent topic in today's context that is road traffic safety, societal and engineering perspective. I hope everybody present here will be immensely benefited from this session. It is my great pleasure in handing over the session now to Dr. Ives. Dr. Ives, the session is yours now. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Thakur, uh, for such a nice introduction. I am not very sure whether I am actually being uh, a person who should have been introduced in such a big way still, and uh, more so thanks to the Meghna Chahai Institute of Technology. Uh, on a very nice morning, not so sunny, but obviously a cloudy, but uh, really a pleasant weather. Uh, Professor Hasim sir, and also the other faculty members of the department, especially uh, Professor Abhishek Roy and Professor Shourav Pal, who actually constantly kept in touch with me, to be very honest, actually constantly poked me uh, uh, to be in part of this. And actually, before going into the presentation, I'm uh, coming live with such a things because uh, as uh, Dr. Thakur has pointed out, that I had a brief stint with this department of civil engineering of Meghna Chaha Institute of Technology. So it is basically uh, a homecoming to me. Every time the department gives me the pleasure to interact, it's a homecoming. And to be very honest, it's not only a brief stint. It was in 2004 when the first batch of Meghna Chaha Institute of Technology Civil Engineering Department stepped into their department on the second year level after completing the common curriculum. This actually brings me back to 16 years ago. As soon as I have learned that they actually gave again the opportunity for me to be the first speaker among this webinar series. So it just gives me the similar kind of thought that this institute once gave me the opportunity of being the first faculty member of the department. And now this institute is again giving me the opportunity of being the first speaker of the webinar series. So this is really, I'm um, overwhelmingly thankful to the department and to all the professors of the department. So with this, let us move on to today's topic basically. And so just give me a moment so that I can share my presentation. And I request uh, Professor Rai and uh, uh, Professor Paul to just uh, give a confirmation once it is being shared that it is being visible to everyone. Is it visible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Is it changing? Yes, yes. Slide? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Slide is changing. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And I think I'm audible also. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Social and engineering perspective. To be very honest, I actually do not want to go into anything deep into technical. But what I like to share today is why actually we should study these things or why we should focus on this topic of road traffic safety, both from our role of a part of the society, definitely a group of people, 
who are supposed to be enlightened knowledgeable and so should lead the society and so what should be our role in this context of road traffic safety and also not to forget our very important role as an engineer more importantly as a civil engineer in this aspect of road traffic safety i think the participants of this seminar who are from the civil engineering background maybe the either all of them or most of them some of them may have some ideas of theoretical background of the aspects connected with road traffic safety some of them might not have still the idea of that but will definitely have the idea my aim today is just to share with you all that why we should have a very focused idea and a very focused knowledge on this topic which is really a very important and alarming one and where should we give our focus on and so to begin with why we should focus on these topics let's just have some facts just some figures figures like eighth number 1 number 3 1.35 million rankings like eighth first third this is normally uh, something to be boast of in most of the cases a large number like 1.35 million is also something to be boast of but definitely not the fact on the context of what we are discussing today because this road traffic hazards is the eighth leading cause of death for people globally of all ages at present we know that we are going through a pandemic situation continuously having the fear psychosis going on regarding our health hazard family the life and death all such things but even then we must remember that this road traffic hazards whom we consider as the builders of the nation the future of our universe and we being in the countries of low to medium income have to be more cautious as we have a three times more higher death rate in comparison to the high income countries and we have 1.35 million deaths each year and this is counting on and on and growing on and on more this is the more significant and more fearsome fact and apart from the death the associated loss of active life for the people with a staggering figure of 7961326 per year that is this many number of people suffered from road injury or some kind of secondary effects induced from the road injury and also among the top 5 mentioned there ischemic heart disease stroke copd lower respiratory infection and lung cancer it has been found that at least 3 of the 5 if not 4 of the 5 that is copd lri and lung cancer has a strong correlation with road traffic so this is really really alarming for us at the same time as we grow as a country develops its road traffic increases actually road traffic system is being considered as one of the major indicative parameter of development of a country but still so we must have to make a balance between this development and the associated hazard and just some facts and figures some of the very common national and global disastrous phenomenon like the twin tower attack in usa the mumbai attack more commonly known as 
that disastrous day of 2611 in india the nepal earthquake the kashmir flood the tsunami were considered as one of the severe most natural disaster of this century vis a vis the road traffic hazard if we just try to find out the death figures for twin tower attacks it was 2977 for mumbai attack it was 164 for nepal earthquake it was 8800 for kashmir flood it was 460 for tsunami it was 0.23 million and all of them have happened once and this road traffic hazard has more than 1.2 million per year and growing on steadily so i think the figures are really really alarming and it has been found that the countries with the low to medium income has a more increment of the road traffic induced hazards as shown in this figure this orange mark is the increment of the <coughs> increased quantity of the road traffic deaths and it has been shown that 60% of the middle income countries and 27% of the low income countries has a increased in the road traffic hazard deaths since 2013 and considering a long 30 year period from 1980 to 2010 it has been very very important to note that the regions of east asia southeast asia and the south asia has a very high percentage positive growth of road injury deaths whereas the rest of the world apart from oceania and southern sub saharan africa most of them has a decrease in the count of road traffic induced deaths in this 30 year period in our indian scenario road accidents causes one third of the unnatural deaths of our country that is every one out of the three people died of unnatural circumstances or from the road traffic in the injuries and the the number of people killed on the road this has increased although in between 2010 it to 2014 it has shown a little bit of decrease but it has again started increasing from 2014 onwards and the death rate has steadily increased without almost ever showing any chance of any decrease of the curve and a very important figure that with the road length increment which is shown by this red curve apparently the pattern of the road accidents decreases but this from 2011 onwards but this is actually more due to a increase in the road lengths of our country whereas based upon the population it continuously remains steady and growing on slowly so it has very strong thing connected with this population whereas with the number of vehicles it has again started decreasing as our vehicle ownership increases so on an indirect way at first thought it can be said that these road induced deaths have more strong correlation with the population in comparison to the road lengths or the number of vehicles it does not have any such data to predict that the road accidents increases as we have more vehicles on the roads actually the reverse indicates among the different types of vehicles that are connected with the road accident deaths more than 50% are connected with two types of vehicles the goods carriers and the two wheelers 51% are of those vehicles followed by 20% by four wheeler cars and 
a staggering 15 to 25 years of people as the majority of the deaths, both in, for the male as well as female, followed by 25 to 35 years. As we were being talking about earlier regarding the global trend, our country shows nothing different. And so 15 to 35 years of the people contribute to more than 50% of the road traffic deaths. So we are actually hitting it directly to the next gen and maybe to most of the people of today's part webinar participants, they might have belonged to this age group. Our state of West Bengal, although not among the worst, but definitely not among the good also. Contributed luck population is below the national average of 11.7 as in 2015, where our state has a contribution of 6.7 deaths per luck population. And as we are talking about, always keep in mind that this is increasing in number. But the most important and the most fearsome one for the people of West Bengal is the growth rate. All the four parameters, that is number of road accident, the death rate, death per lakh population, and death per 100 accident, all of them are staggeringly high in comparison to the national average. The yellow bars shows the average of three years from 2012 to 15 for our state of West Bengal, whereas the blue bar showed the national average of growth in the same period. And so this is where we are actually looking forward to a gloomy future, unless we have a very strong planning to counteract that. And our city of Calcutta, remember, we do not have such a large number of vehicles like most of the metropolis, but still, this is being fourth on the list after Chennai, Jaipur, Delhi, and Pune on the death per lakh population with a figure of 8.93 death per lakh population. And in Calcutta, among the accidents, 89% of them are injury type of accidents and 10 to 11% of them are fatal or death related accidents. And among the injury type of accidents, almost it is one third, one third like major injury, minor injury, and no injury or almost non reported injury cases. But here, I want to share a hard fact with all the participants. I think participants themselves can also contribute to this. The fact is, how many of the road accidents are truly reported? Because whatever we are saying so far, the number of games we are playing, those are all on the basis of reported cases, reported to the government agencies. Actually, this is from where we should have a proper planning system. We lack very much on our database. And I think the participants, as well as my esteemed colleagues on the organizers panel, who work on different domains of this engineering and societal engineering definitely hope they will agree with me that this lack of data is one of the most weak link of our country and in road accident it is not only lack of data but it is intentional suppressing of the data it is a very common fact that many road accidents went unreported or went wrongly reported in order to get off the legal hassles in order to have a smooth insurance claim. Although looked funny, but this is a very interesting part. Globally, the road accident data are being collected from the insurance in agencies. Those of you and us who own some kind of motorized vehicle, 
we know that every motorized vehicle must have to be insured insurance that is not for the vehicle neither for the vehicle owner but for the third party if the third party is damaged by that vehicle then the owner of the party actually pays the premium so that the insurance company pays the third party who has got some injury or damage to the vehicle but in most of the cases in order to get rid of this insurance hassles many of the accidents are wrongly reported reported as self accidents not involving any third party and if you look to everyday life all around you you might realize that the facts and figures we are talking about may not be even 50% of the true facts and figures that happens on our roads so whatever we see at the actual figure may be quite high from that definitely deaths you might say that these facts must have been the perfect or the correct one that is also not the true case death is always an unfortunate thing but in case of an unnatural death if any of the participants have that unfortunate experience of going through any such cases of any close one facing any unnatural death i am one of the unfortunate having multiple such instances then the first thought comes to the mind of the close ones is that let's have a um, minimum or hassle free post date activities and for that in many cases the cause of the unnatural deaths are restructured so as read as none of these figures are the true facts the actual figures are much much higher than that and just an economic effect a very difficult thing i should definitely encourage and hope that there must have been at least a few people who either works or in future will work in the domain of transportation economics a very important domain a very few of us work in that but for a developing country like us this is the most important aspect that is what is the economic defect of different aspects of the transportation system and a rough estimate suggests that the annual loss due to road traffic accidents in our country is almost three times that of our annual defense budget that is even if we could have reduced this loss by one third of that then we could have saved a amount equal to our annual defense budget and that could have been diverted to other developmental plans of the country which in turn will definitely increase the resource potential of our country so those working in the planning sector or those who have an eye of working in the planning sector or joining in the decision making group in the future must have to look into this aspect of the economic loss of the road traffic accidents so what i truly believe that it is time for actually it is not time for we have well passed the crucial time for a war against road traffic induced hazards it need to be an war where everyone every proper civilized social human being should act as an army should act as a weapon to fight against these road traffic induced hazards and difficulties are there difficulties are there which obviously we 
the engineers or the transportation planners must look into as the scientists have a thought that they are closer to comprehending the birth of the universe than the daily tie ups along the transportation system of an urban metropolis many of the transportation engineers still believe that it is easier to set up a township on mars rather than solve the daily hassles of a traffic planning system of an urban metropolis city but still we have to work on and the best possible way of managing this traffic system is to be aware not be aware but to be aware and spread the awareness awareness among the people awareness among everyone because this is a hazard this is a disaster not only disaster in making but disaster in existence and as the people in the disaster management say although we do not follow that to be very honest that a disaster management do not or should not aim at rescue it should not aim at the model of repair rescue and repaint although in most of the cases we work in the model of repair and repaint that is we plan everything of post disaster what we will do if the disaster struck but a true management suggests it should be in the form of managing at pre event stage instead of repair and repaint we should be aware enough and have a model of prepare and prevent and that model of prevention should come from us the engineers the civil engineers those who have the prefix of civil in their engineering domain name which means their engineering should be for the betterment of the civil society of which we all are part of and also our other role of an intelligent social person so a dual role of society and a engineer and thus the prevention planning should stand upon three legs i think we the civil engineers are quite accustomed to this three legged system many of our instruments have a support of tripods we know that the three legs the three pointed legs of the tripod on the ground forms a triangle from the the basics of the euclidean geometry the most stable geometric figure a triangle and so if you have a solid stable triangular base then whatever you fit on on those stands it will also what we should directly do educative we didn't have a role directly but we should have to give the planning of what to be taught and how to be taught whom to be taught nothing no doubt about that everyone each and every human being should be taught of this road traffic safety just like we were taught by uh, we had taught by our earlier generation we teach our next generation of how to live how to eat how to maintain the basic health standards how to keep the daily hygiene we should taught everyone every one of this society regarding this road traffic hazards and its preventions and finally last but not the least the enforcement whatever we learn whatever we plan there may always be a chance of violating that and we should have a proper reliable and 
applicable laws and the enforcers. So there should be three group of people also. Social teachers, engineers, and law enforcers. And make it very sure, planning is engineer's domain. Although unfortunately, in our area, more so in our region, in our state, we are familiar to find out that the police department plans for the traffic movement. But it is not their domain of work. Their domain of work should be to enforce what has been planned. And the planning should be done by the transport planners. That's a separate domain, a specified knowledge base. The people who are only knowledgeable on that domain can work on that transportation planning, but hand in hand with the law enforcers to find out what can truly be done on the ground and form the proper law. And then the social educators should start preaching to the whole society what is the plan and what should be followed. The engineering includes geometric design, the very basic of transportation engineering, on which almost every aspect depends. The traffic control systems, not only the traffic signals, everything, the roadside markings, the boards, the indicators, everything are part of the control system. The lighting, the highway illumination, a very important aspect. How much light should be there? How much illuminated road should be there? Where we should have the light posts? I think those who are familiar with the initial phases of highway geometric design, they know very well the aspect of highway geometrics. I am not going to have a lecture session on highway geometric design, but just a suggestion. Those who know it, learn it, know it from your heart. Those who are going to learn it, learn it at every stage knowing why you are learning that. Why you are learning to design a proper highway curve. Why you are learning to design a proper drainage system. Everything has a role with the safety. The same goes for the other aspects. What some of us might already have learned, some of us might learn in the future. But whenever we learn, we must learn by associating with the daily lives, daily life surrounding us. Always, whenever you learn the engineering of the transport, learn it from two sides of the table. Learn as an engineer, learn as an user. Learn as an engineer, learn as a planner, learn as a planner, learn as an executor. Because this is one domain where we play the role of everyone. In other domains of engineering, in most of the other domains of engineering, we do not do it. Yeah, we do it. We do it for those domains which has direct social implications. Like when we learn the quality treatment of, say, drinking water, we must learn it from both sides. Who will give us to drink the water? The same goes for the traffic and transportation, but it is at every point of view. So the engineering knowledge should always be connected with what happens in surrounding our daily lives. The geometric design, the traffic control system, the traffic illumination, the quality control, that is the continuous evaluation and management of the system which has been planned and constructed. And the risk prevention, that also includes the quality of the vehicles, the quality of the drivers, all these things included. The other half of the planning, the educative level. It should start from the school level, it should involve the mass media. We must have availability of rules, a very rare thing in our country. A regular medical and stress check up of the drivers. 
I will be happy to know post presentation that among the people who have driving license in this today's discussion session, how many of them has gone through a true medical checkup before getting the driving license? I would be very pleased if that percentage crosses 10 and have a mass involvement. And above all, we should have an enforcement, stringent licensing. Hope we will achieve this. At least these are the few things where we lack strongly from the developed countries. Speed monitoring, a very important aspect and a very debatable one also. What does speed monitoring means? Who will decide on speed monitoring? What we do? We commonly do, as soon as there is a hazard, we introduce different aspects to reduce the speed. Well, that's a very common thing. This is being a very easy known thing. If you start reducing the speed, then the impact of the hazard will be less. And mathematically, if the speed of the travel goes to zero, that is not. Does this mean what is speed monitoring? No, sir, this should not be. Speed monitoring means the speed should be monitored within the planned limit. And the planned limit should also take into account the need of travel, the ease of travel, the safety of travel. We cannot go on and continue reducing speed and speed and speed and do not look into the other aspects. Proper signage and informations, managing those. Now, that is why to put the signages, where to put the signages, and also the safety systems. I will just share with you, I am not going into the details of these topics. Many of them are part of the regular course curriculum of civil engineering. Many of them are available for learning for interested people. And I hope, and I'm very certain that those which are part of the teaching learning process of civil engineering, the those participants who are students of today must have learned many of them or will learn many of them in due time. And I hope that those who will be interested in those domain, there are multiple experts, even in our state, at various institutes who will always be free to give you their advices. You can always connect them, contact them, join them, and truly contribute to the society. And thus, I'll just share with you some of the simple solutions and just some of the points to show why we should do it and Apart from the nitty gritties, again, just some figures among the cause of deaths in our country, the reported cases in 73% it is driver's fault. Again, a very strong debatable one. Driver is the person who is at the most weak or dicey spot to be identified as the faulty one. Yes, definitely it should be the driver's fault. Just like every debt is stopping the beating of the heart and stopping the functioning of the brain. But we must have to study is truly, truly the driver's fault is the only cause. If we see the reasons that are being marked in our official document, there is nothing like a poor planning or poor system design or poor execution or poor engineering. But these things must have to be there. These things may have induced driver's fault. So the true reason is those weak links. Because just something to look at. 
here and there everywhere at present we introduce traffic signals what technically we call as controlled intersection but even after that one third of the accidents happen at controlled intersections so why if those intersections are controlled then why it happens so either those control is not properly engineered then it is basically the fault of engineering or the users might not have a true knowledge of what does that control system means then there is a true fault of education or there is lack of policing in the control then there is the lack of knowledge of enforcement so this is not only installing a signal it should be properly engineered properly taught and properly enforced where weather causes accidents but our own data suggests two third of the accidents happens in fine weather so there must have been something else again those three e's engineering enforcement education what we commonly known as the three e's of traffic safety management the three e's which will ease us of the pain of traffic hazards now what we should do there are three stages pre crash crash and post crash obviously we should heavily focus on the pre crash system just some suggestions and some facts five major risk factors are identified by world health organization under un as the five major risk factors for accidents helmets for two wheelers over speeding over speeding means again above a properly planned speed limit drunk driving seat belts and child restraint again i will be very interested to know how many of participants are aware of this child restraint law and the figures suggest the number of countries covered by those laws in 2008 and 2011 why 8 and 11 because united nations has something very positive at least on paper something decided in 2011 and let's see what this truly means over speeding this is more so urban speed law because it is only in the urban region where the speeds are restricted but i just give you a figure a fact here on an average on the non urban highways the fastest travels are recorded in the country of germany on their national highways known as autobahn average speed on those highways are more than 150 km per hour with no upper limit of speed but definite lower limit of speed slower movings not allowed on slower moving vehicles not allowed on those roads and what do you think regarding the contribution of accidents of germany globally it is the least germany with the highest speed corridors in the world contributes least to the accidents globally so my friends it is not directly speed but it is the other factors associated with speed improper geometric design for that speed improper skill of the drivers for that and heterogeneous vehicles now coming to the urban speed law in our country there is no such specific urban speed law uniform urban speed law we have non uniform urban speed law 
and the guideline of UN from that research of who suggests we should have a uniform urban speed law as it is being found that non-uniformity in traveling speeds led to road accidents. Continuous change of speed guidelines led to road accidents. We do not have that. We have urban speed laws, a global guideline of 50 km per hour. We are more stringent to that, but we have varied it over different places for different type of vehicles, all these type of things. Drunk driving law for our country, this is on the second level regarding stringency of drunk driving law. That is the blood alcohol concentration limit is 0 0.05 gram per deciliter for regular drivers and points who work on this domain, they can very well say how much quantity of regular alcoholic drinks will cross us over to this law, the limit specified. Our law enforcers try to enforce it. But again, my friends, I have a very small question from a layman's country where alcohols are served and many of them have the facility of valet parking. What does valet parking indicates? That is, the restaurant provides people who will park the vehicle of those who self drove to the restaurant to a parking lot and will keep a watch on the vehicle during the time the person will be in the restaurant or bar or pub and when he comes out will hand him over the vehicle thus we are allowing bars and pubs to have people coming to the system by driving self and after having a drink of one or two allowed to go back driving self. How can we do it? This is actually what a comprehensive and holistic planning and law enforcing means. We should have the law at the very ground level. We should have the law so that at the implementation level, it is bound to be followed. Motorcycle helmet law. Our law suggests all riders on all roads with all engine types having standard helmets fastened. Yeah. Yes, truly. Our city is one of the best in our country. And being a motorcycle with a helmet will be a person to be watched for. But we have the most stringent law in our country. We have this, but we know what actually is being followed. Instead of all riders on all roads and having standard helmet, we actually use all type of helmets, starting from a motorbike helmet to an engineer's helmet to even a cricketer's helmet. Every helmet has its own purpose, but we use it. And most importantly, fastened. We sometimes have the helmet on our head, sometimes have the helmet on our hand, sometimes the helmet on in the handle of the two-wheeler, sometimes on our head, but the belt not fastened. And all these, instead of doing good, actually does worst. Seat belt laws. Again, something interesting. Our law suggests all occupants of a car must have seat belts fashioned. How many vehicles have proper seat belts on the rear seat? We only know that also in urban region that we must have seat belts 
in the front for the front seat passenger and the driver my friends seat belt is the safety for your own it is not for anybody else it cannot be ensured that with the seat belt you will be safe against all kind of hazard but it can be said with certainty that without the seat belt you are definitely to face the severe most the severe most cases of the road traffic hazards and the child restraint law well we do not have it this actually suggests that for children below 10 years of age or 173 cm of height and not allowed to sit on the front seats although we regularly take them on the lap on the front seat we take them as the third or the fourth person in motorbikes and also we must have specific child seats at the rear but we rarely do it the same goes for the pedestrians the pedestrians in 62% that is two third cases have died while crossing the road why so pedestrian crossing should be part of the planned system does all these two third people died even following the true plan or is there a true plan at all so this need to be studied just to give you an example a few real ones from our city the zebra crossings marked for the pedestrians vehicles parked everywhere so from where the pedestrians will cross here and there everywhere on the road so who is to be blamed ask yourself you will find the answer no crossing pedestrian walking by raising a hand actually from our childhood we had a dream probably of being a traffic constable raise our hand vehicles will stop at our instruction and we feel very happy to do it feel proud to do it and should it be and now something very interesting i dgm marked as the pedestrian crossing domain and note down the two red marked spots one at the beginning that is the starting point of the pedestrian just ask from where i should start walking and the other has a electric pole and the traffic kiosk so how should we go in jumping into the kiosk and going out through the traffic kiosk so the planners have been going again those three is very difficult on paper we have national road safety policy that provided a four e's rule and as we say we do not want to get out of that repair and repaint mode so with the three e we have introduced emergency care that is education engineering enforcement after that emergency care yes that should be but that should not be part of a planning for preventing the road hazards this should be the last resource but still we have introduced this as our fourth e we have introduced national road safety policy having policy statements like raising awareness establishing a safety information database ensuring safer infrastructure safer vehicles safer drivers safety of road users education and training enforcement of laws emergency medical care research and development something which need to be found through microscope in our country strengthening and enabling legal institutional and financial environment and for this we have formed a board nrstmb national road safety and traffic management board and we who actually are connected logically technologically and mentally with this domain hope 
that this board will come out of documentation and will start taking into its domain the people from all aspect of the life take their expertise and develop a true policy and implement that and in 2015 we have given 10 golden rules and at least to me almost all are challengeable stop or slow down to allow pedestrians to cross first at uncontrolled zebra crossings there cannot be anything like that who will know where there will be pedestrian there must have to be some kind of planning buckle up seat belts this is part of the general rules so what is golden about that obey traffic rules and signs this is something like telling a teacher that you should teach your students and telling the students that you should learn from the teachers again i couldn't find what is golden about that obey speed limits keep vehicle fit never use mobile while driving wear helmet never drive dangerously be courteous never mix drink and driving so my friend this is just like telling that you must have to put your step forward if you want to walk is it truly golden rules or this is the fundamentals okay at least on document we are considering that the fundamentals are golden so let's hope that the fundamentals will be followed and there can be different kind of suggestions i just share with you briefly and quickly a few common suggestions we can thought of at least for our city planning alternate mode of transport like water transport we have a big river flowing in the north south direction proper illumination of the roads proper direction boards like one shown in the figure proper geometric design patterns and the plannings like one way traffic the medians the footpaths all these things some technological suggestions some waking up devices tired and fatigued drivers sleeping during driving a common menace on the highways some kind of device this is being available in some countries of the world which actually gives a sharp beep as soon as it senses by sensing the nervous system of the driver that the driver is drowsy so as to wake him up proper proper systems with video cameras traffic controllers speed detectors etc then some true educational suggestions controlling video and computer games involving motor racing keeping the child away those games gives you a bursting sound when a crash takes place an interesting sound and you again move on but in life it will not be the case not allowing cycling on busy roads but definitely providing alternate spaces always think of if we disallow something we must allow some alternates proper playing fields so that people are not are, have to play on the roads true truly truly school level of teaching not only having a uh, designated road safety weeks and asking the school children to come on the roads and play the role of the traffic constable no this is not their duty school children are not for the traffic constables they have the role to learn and to force their parents to obey the rule this is their role they should be taught that true mass campaign true mass campaign through interesting advertisements media and all such things 
some environmental things clean the road sides uh, dirty road sides road sides filled with filth garbage food wastes brings down lots of animals and birds and their movement encroaches the carriage way so this also he has to take care of and just talking about those things which are beyond regular classroom syllabus but definitely connected with the classroom syllabus yes i am part of public but a public property is not my own property we should not do whatever we do in our own property the roads are not meant for all these things not meant for vending not meant for storing the building materials but as soon as i say that i always have that one we must have alternate plannings for that we stop the vendors vending on the road we must have alternate planning for the vendors to vend at some other specific point probably we never realize until and unless we have someone in this vehicle in this ambulance of our own then we realize that it is us who has created this problem and some easy implementable solutions promoting bright colored things everywhere from containers to bicycles have bright colored ones so they are visible from far away avoiding black colored car and even those who do not want to buy that logic you can share another logic and show more fuel when are driven in air condition on mode so go for light and bright colored cars stop all dangerous tv commercials you just cannot give a small disclaimer on the bottom and run the dangerous commercials have the school dresses of bright colors have proper enforcements a mo two wheeler motorbike is for two person not for a family not for others beauty purposes for us the engineers while implementing proper visibility the roadside dividers have a role to play obviously they can be beautified but not in the cost of stopping the visibility a proper visible traffic signs and signages when the driver will be able to see it at the last moment and will take a decision automatically it will lead to an hazard clean stop all on off unauthorized uses and advertisements some tag lines of the most common vehicles of our country either focusing on the speed like racing dna unleashed or racing instinct or definitely mel or for the smarter race or for fuel efficiency fill it shut it forget it but really we can find commercials highlighting on the safety of the vehicles we should do it movies just an example with a movie a bengali movie zulfikar many movies are shown that this movie has shown the lead roles yeah definitely they are the black people in the movie black not on the basis of the skin color but of the darker part of our society who are driving motorbikes on a wrong side racing them on a flyover but think of they are our idols so if they can do we can also do games in many of those amusement parks we have a game known as striking cars where the young minds are asked to drive a vehicle and strike each other no sir they should be strictly banned even in the games we should teach them not to strike to drive safely we have the movies starting from the very old times in the 50s 60s 70s even recently people driving motorbikes without helmets 
people driving cars without seat belts, people driving motorbikes with pillion rider on the top of the hill, or it was the biopic of off screen idols. So we must be very cautious. And yes, I'm really proud of one thing. That is, I actually talk about that almost for the last four or five years. And I hope many people like me talk about that. And at least now, the movie started giving disclaimers, started giving statutory warnings for the traffic rule violations also. Just like they give statutory warnings for smoking. I personally is not a strong follower of statutory warning, but it's like at least something better than nothing. Banglai bolle, nahi mama che kana mama bhalo. Hope one day we do not have to give the statutory warning as we will stop all these things. And obviously, what we can do so, friends, we can work on our own. We can submit the suggestions to the authorities. We can share the ideas with the NGOs, schools or college authorities, students, their parents. And we can help, seek the help of the visual and print media. In a nutshell, we individually should be aware of everything and make others aware. And regarding that one is just to tell you one thing we have mentioned, why we have taken 2011 once, because that decade that we are almost coming to an end is the International Decade of Road Safety. Another poll I will be very interested to know at a certain day, how many were aware of that prior to this presentation. That 2011 to 20 was the International Decade of Road Safety under the UN General Assembly Resolution number 54 by 255 of 2010 and our country India is one of the signatory to that. We perform different United Nations days with much fanfare. What we do for this? We had an aim of reducing the growth rate by 50% and saving five million growth rate of debt, the debt rate by 50% and saving 5 million lives. But alas, at least till 2017 in our country, the curve is increasing. So 70% of the decade, we haven't shown anything towards the target of that UNGA resolution. And what we do, we do ad hoc solutions that we will not solve. We must remember road safety is a science and needs professional approaches. Safety planning is jurisdiction of engineers and its implementation is the policing. And we must allow proper people to provide proper input at proper place. And so with this, my friends, with the hope that all of us will come out and will provide our proper input to the proper place and make our society a better one to live in. I am just concluding my lecture today, handing over the mic to Professor Shourav Pal for the next session and closing down my presentation. Thank you so very much. Uh, big thank you, sir. Uh, I really appreciate your words that we are not only the builders of the civil society, but also the responsible citizens. Uh, so we have a great role to play, a great role to act on, and only a combined effort of all of us can fight against the greatest man-made man disaster of today. Uh, actually, according to you, also according to the uh, World Health Organization, uh, as we have said in the past slide, uh, approximately 1.35 million people die each year as a result of this. So this is one of the greatest man-made disaster we can see. So a big thank you, sir, again. Uh, I must mention our deep sense of appreciation for you, uh, but for for your wonderful explanation and presentations, we are really enlightened with your knowledge and presence. We have been fortunate enough that, sir, you have spent a part of your valuable time with us. Uh, well, an event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheel started rolling two days ago, 
I can remember still uh, that I approached sir only uh, two weeks ago, but sir never disappointed us. So thank you once again, sir. And also I, I would like to thank the wonderful participants who have turned up in numbers, not only from our institutions, rather also from various other institutions also. Thank you so much for your cooperation. Well, it's time for some announcements for the participants. Uh, the webinar session, this webinar session, will be uploaded shortly in our YouTube channel with the same link you have. In the description, we will provide you the link for providing the feedback to this event so that we can get a bit, we can get better next time. There, we will also find something, some section to give your details, general details like your name, designations, your institutions, so that we can generate a certificate of participation for you. I request you, all of you, uh, to please submit it as soon as possible, preferably within today. Another announcement that I'm, I would likely to say uh, that our next webinar is also scheduled, is also arranged on 11th August, 1030 onwards. For that, please follow our departmental Facebook page for the details of, the, of our next webinar. It will be given shortly to you. Uh, the link also, the Facebook page link will be also given in the description. So now, uh, coming to our next and last segment of this meeting, uh, we will bring forward some questions asked by the participants. So for this, I will like Dr. Obisek Roy, Professor Obisek Roy, to take the session. I will hand it, hand it over to Dr. Obisek Roy. Sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, thank you, uh, Shorab. Uh, sir, we have, uh, till now we have almost nine or ten questions we have already received. So I will uh, forward uh, all of them one by one. Uh, first question which we have received, that is after COVID pandemic ends, there will be a tendency among common people to use private vehicle in place of public one. So how to counter the increased rate of traffic after the pandemic ends? How to counteract the increased pollution rate and what will be the effect on transport economics? Well, thank you. Uh, probably a very uh, important and in interesting question uh, at this juncture of our life. Uh, and uh, obviously a real hard fact. Uh, we know that the traffic scenario is going to change a lot. At least we can expect a lot. And definitely uh, there cannot be any answer to this question by a single word. Uh, actually, there are three three part of the question as I have found. Uh, the common uh, premise being the shift of the pattern of the vehicular mode from mass transport to individual transport. This is the common thing. And three impacts are being uh, suggested about one the impact on the road safety or the transport movement planning another on the environmental impact another on the economic impact now first of all uh, be candid enough i am not at all uh, equipped to talk about the last two things i think uh, uh, professor roy or professor bishwajit thakur uh, could have enlightened uh, and i'll be very happy if they have anything to add on after my reply on that environmental impact aspect. Uh, and uh, I do not know anyone uh, who actually have that uh, transportation economics. If there is anyone in the panel, uh, I, that will also be welcome. Now, regarding the planning aspect, yes, that is a big challenge, a big challenge to the transportation planners. But as we say, that is for us engineers, at least from the very first day of the engineering, what we were taught and what we believe in is that if there is a problem, there is an answer. So obviously there are answers. The traffic movement pattern need to be restructuring of vehicles on the basis of their mode on the roads. That is, we might have to think of, but just a disclaimer at the very beginning, these are all might have to think of. There is not yet any published work on a foolproof solution on that, neither from any researcher, not even from my own domain. Although 
I am working a little bit on this, but focusing on a micro level of that, focusing on individual two wheelers like bicycles or motorcycles, but that goes to all individual vehicles. That is the solutions might include separating different type of vehicles for different roads, using the parallel road transport network for this purpose. That is one particular road may be used for the uh, four wheeler vehicles only, because at the same time, we must have to realize that mass transport has a certain particular domain and particular purpose to fulfill. They have certain stoppages. They must uh, remain at certain, stop at certain stoppages. When we have individual vehicles, we need not have to stop through which the individual vehicles might move without stopping in between way. Similarly, we have to redesign the intersection controls. That is the signals because mass transport has a different kind of movement behavior, different kind of demand, whereas a public transport has a different kind of thing. And obviously, if this truly happens, obviously from the other aspects, we shouldn't like it. I think uh, uh, Professor Thakur or Professor Rai might add up a little bit. I'll request them. Mass transports are always preferable from environmental or economic point of view. But if that truly happens, then obviously we'll have a little bit of space coming out of from reduced number of mass transport, which might all again be used in planning the individual transports. So, yes, this is a challenge, a new challenge. Ali, we must stop it, start thinking in a new way for the next 20 to 30 years and replan whatever it is. And I'm sure there will be replan. And so with that, if we have some, a little bit more about the environmental aspect, it would have been nicer to that question. Sir, thank you, sir. BT, sir, uh, would you like to add up on this? Definitely the abundance and distribution of different kind of vehicles are going to change in the new normal. What are the consequences? What is really changing? What is the really, really, what is the real change in the scenario? Of course, this pandemic situation has posed a new challenge on the traffic planners, uh, not only from safety point of view, but from environmental point of view also, because as Dr. Ice has already said, that always environment, environmentalist and lesser number of personal vehicles carrying lesser number of people per vehicle. But definitely from safety point of view in this new normal of this pandemic situation, that is going to change. Because to maintain safe social distancing, the physical distancing, we need to avoid at least for now, the public vehicles, if possible. Of course, this balance is shifting. And what are the consequences could be only ascertained only after new traffic surveys are carried out. And not only traffic surveys, but also the commuter surveys commuter preferences, how they are changing their commuting behavior, this kind of things. But these are interesting. I, one, one thing is sure, this is going to be a very interesting scenario in terms of research opportunities. That is all I have to say for now. Okay. Thank you so yes, much. and just to conclude, probably this is going to open a vast domain of research for yes. all the present and would-be researchers to work on this absolutely changing scenario model. Yes, Ovi. Secondly, yes. Just, yes, just, just I want to add one more thing. Perhaps for personal vehicles, this is opening a new way for the electric vehicles. Perhaps there is going to be a boost in the number of electric vehicles, personal electric vehicles, electric two-wheelers, this kind of things. Let us see what happens. Yes, because uh, I want to add uh, one or two lines to that, actually, uh, with the already as uh, Sir have discussed, that uh, actually the, this new normal or the condition to know the actual uh, 
statistics we have to we have to perform the studies so how much vehicles are there because uh, even when we are uh, unlocking or the india is going through the unlock period some vehicles or some office is opening or on a routine basis or on a uh, not on daily basis so obviously that will also have some effect we can't just say the vehicles percentage will increase to the uh, preference to the public cars uh, uh, by avoiding the uh, normal uh, uh, sorry from the private private vehicles to the public vehicles but the entire how entirely how many cars are there in the road that needs to be checked and also as uh, sir have said also about the pollution we have seen in the unlock phase except one particular pollutants in air that is tropospheric ozone all the others all the others for the all other pollutants the condition is far better in the in the uh, lockdown phase because all the pollutant level is very much less within the limit the police uh, air quality is far better but while going through this unlocking phase obviously uh, uh, gradually the air quality will uh, again deteriorate but we have to see and all uh, obviously i agree with both of them that this is the new area of research we have to think in terms of environment in terms of transportation also in both the cases will have some new interesting research uh, i guess the, the new researcher will be will work on this and will get some data after the uh, after the whole unlocking uh, period will go on so so our second question i will take uh, that is that is uh, from mr a roy in a growing city like kolkata can introduction of micro mobility really improve the traffic system as well as its safety concern well uh take into account first of all yes uh, kolkata uh, is uh, quite a challenging city uh, more so because uh, like most of the cities the metropolis kolkata is growing but interestingly geographically the kolkata is restricted to grow we have at one side of, that is on the western bank there is a river ganga and on the eastern side there is a vast natural reservoir area the east calcutta wetland uh, both of which uh, should be again uh, kept untouched and i think uh, anything uh, said adverse to that uh, might have cause gross anger among the environmentalists and very positively so and so the uh, most difficult part is the city is uh, have only a growing potential in north south direction or uh, another alternative one growing on the other bank of the river which is not truly being exposed off in our city we do not have such a good connectivity as most of the two in cities of the world and thus in that particular case obviously uh micro transportation and mobilization of that that uh, there is a very common perspective i'm not saying it is wrong this is being true from mostly from the town planners part of view that we have less road space in calcutta in comparison to the other cities yes that's true but at the same time we have much much less vehicle pressure on this city one of the major problem of the calcutta which if we look at can be the strength is that calcutta the road use distribution of the city of calcutta is very much skewed only a handful of roads are overused and majority of the roads are underused and so a proper planning of distribution of the vehicles on the basis of their purpose and demand over all the roads of the city will help surely in managing the traffic scenario of kolkata thank you sneha raha also we have another similar sort of question i guess sneha from sneha raha sir how can micro mobility be useful for our country so i guess uh, that is more or less similar answer sir or would you like to add something on that also actually uh, for our country just uh, as every aspect the diversification of our country that is being true in the 
transportation sector also so obviously there uh, we must realize that there cannot be one unique solution for our country we might have a national plan of road transport road safety all such things but on ground level every planning should consider the true demand and supply model of the local area thank you sir so the next question is is this a design failure that traffic signals are not being placed at their appropriate position and this leads to many accidents well this question is a little bit ambiguous because uh, uh, we couldn't find out only from this question what actually is being meant with the incorrect position that is whether this is incorrect location considering the stretch of the road that is whether it is being suggested that instead of point a it should be at point b or whether it is incorrect positioning of the signal posts or the signal lights at the location well in both the cases obviously where to install the traffic signals have certain specific guidelines and definite mathematical models so traffic signals cannot be placed at the will or whims of either the law enforcers or the public demand every intersection need to be studied all possible options need to be worked upon traffic signal is the last resource of traffic management because traffic signal contradicts the very fundamental of traffic engineering that is ease of flow as soon as we install a signal we actually make our flow of a certain direction stopped to provide a time separation and i just give you one example some of the countries in the world which has which has more than more than enough uh road geometry of the roads to work upon they actually are debunking the traffic signals and they are going on the geometric solutions so geometric solutions are always a uh, better ones to work on instead of the traffic signals only but yes and so the traffic signals need to be properly planned on the basis of the location where that should be and at the same time the for the specific positioning of the traffic lights if we consider the question on that aspect yes in our country we have gross problem with that we normally introduce the traffic signals only on the left hand side of the road and even if there are multi lane roads then for the vehicles on the right hand lane it is almost impossible for them to have a proper view of the traffic signals so a proper traffic signal suggested that it should be lane wise signaling and the signal should be hanged over the road instead of being placed on the side of the road thank you sir the next question uh, we are having is uh, from atunu devnath that is uh, in kolkata almost everywhere the footpath is occupied by either temporary shop or vehicles is not it a reason causing the road accident well uh, this is something beyond questionable but this will not be the cause of the road accident if while planning the system we consider that a part of the footpath is occupied for some other purpose apart from pedestrian walking yes at every planning stage we must have to take into account the planning parameters so if the real hard fact is that the entire area of the footpath entire surface area of the footpath is not free for walking then we must take it into consideration and plan accordingly if we do it walking whereas the true fact is not that then that will be a problem that's why as on our very discussion on the first question 
myself, Professor Thakur or Professor Roy all have mentioned that a proper ground level traffic survey, not only the traffic survey, a proper ground level survey of all facilities, demand and supply is the backbone of a true planning. So we must track the true data and design. If we do hypothetical data and design, then our solution will also be hypothetical. And every hypothetical solution will have a certain degree of reliability of success. So at certain parts, it will be successful. At certain parts, it will be failure. The more erratic... Thank you, sir. The next question is from Subrata Patro. Uh, have a question that why black cards are required to be avoided? And we are taking another question along with that because that is of similar nature. That is from Masum Hafiz. Uh, from accident point of view, what would be the safest color of the car? Well, uh, starting from the with the second question, safest color for the car is white. Well, for, for a very obvious reason, because for a road traffic hazard, I am not saying that a white car will not face hazards for in all, or not face all kinds of hazards from a black car, but there are different hazards. And one of the type of hazard is where my vehicle is stuck by another vehicle due to poor visibility. And as white has the hardware by the most and a black element which actually absorbs almost all of the visible wavelength of the light will be visible by the least. So a black car actually has lesser visibility, not the visibility of the black drivers in comparison to a white car. Darker the color, dark color means which absorbs more light, reflects less. Lighter color absorbs less, reflects more. So more it will reflect, more it will be visible. And that's why just associated with that, you can find out more so connected with the civil engineers that for all civil engineering related works, the people working on the roads or the people working on the runways, the idea is just increasing the visibility. Thank you, sir. Uh, the question, another question, uh, one question, which is of the similar topic, that is the black color car is avoided because of accidental point of view. So why the manufacturer are producing these colors cars? Yes, uh, why we should have the dustbins open dustbins on the side of the road, uh, why we have the trees grows here and there everywhere, why, why we should have the medians and the traffic rotaries, which we commonly call as our islands. And we started beautifying them, almost assuming them as a park for evening walk. Actually others, uh, and I think uh, all of us who are sitting here, they work in different domains uh, Professor Technical Domain, uh, Professor Paul works on the pavement engineering with the materials. And I think when we try to work out, we ultimately in most of our regular activities, those impact of one aspect on the other things are being avoided. We only look into our, our focus, our prime objective, and we deliver something. And this actually causes the problem. We must have a holistic planning, which take into account all aspects of the area. Thank you. Uh, one question from uh, Sora Kundus, sir. Have there any impactful effect of the attractive advertisement beside the roadside? Uh, if yes, how much? Well, advertisements beside roadsides uh, is a very uh, generic term. Even the uh, country planned advertisements for the road users. And uh, although we cannot definite vast space for branding their own product to such a large number of people at a go, but definitely that causes a problem if we again indiscriminately allow advertisements or the billboards on the roadsides. 
basically billboards are meant for people to see them but should be placed at those locations where the vehicles are bound to stop or a, has a high possibility of stop and to drive at first speed because if the vehicles drive at a first speed then focus on going through the advertisement matter of the billboard then they will lost focus on their primary purpose of driving on the road so both of these two should be avoided so we cannot again as i have mentioned we cannot take the whole idea of advertising advertising beside the road get off it that will be there but that should be at those locations where the vehicles normally stop or has a probability to stop say at the refueling stations or say at the near at the intersections where there is a possibility of the vehicles stopping due to the signals like this that is where the vehicles will have a chance to have a focus on the advertisement on a stationary mode we try to avoid the advertisement it belt laws can be applied to the public vehicles particularly in public buses as the speed of private car and the bus in the city more or less same mm. well actually for the public buses this is a interesting one for the public buses also the front seat belt law exists and if we ever have the chance of boarding any uh, built in new buses mainly those buses which we in our city commonly call as the jnnu rm buses when they actually roll out from the garage seat belts are there for the driver they even remain so even after a few number of trips seat belts are there also for the front seat the first seat well for the rest of the seats having the seat belts obviously is one aspect but as we have mentioned he, uh, the uh, question has also mentioned that the driving speed are almost the same so we actually have it in our mind that the seat belts are same speed so Uh, let's not have the seat belts where we drive slowly through all localities like that. Truly, the whole thing is not exact. Passenger car are not the same. That's why under an impact, under the same impact, or for a bus and a public transport, the impact that will be transferred to its users will be different. That's why the importance of the seat belt is much more in comparison to that of a public transport, which is quite large in size oh, okay sir thank you sir uh, another one question from sonchita pal can battery vehicles reduce the accidents well there is nothing like that of uh, what drives a vehicle regarding the accidents or the hazards and actually uh, to be very honest i am not so fond of the word accident because gra grammatically accident means which cannot be predicted but those of us who actually work in this domain of problem uh, or the pre crash stage where this happens but okay let's keep on with that one the most common term of the road accidents well the fuel uh, or the energy source normally has very little significant in the accident except if due to the impact the vehicle catches fire if the vehicle catches fire then obviously with a burning fuel in the vehicle it will be more hazardous in comparison to a battery like devices which is definitely less inflammable in comparison to a tank full of petrol battery driven vehicle the impact of that all these things are more connected with the environmental impact of the system and also with the economy of the system sir we will take uh, another uh, last two question because there are lots of question coming but we have a limited time so obviously we can't take more than that and i'm sorry for that to the all the participants those who are commenting uh, so we are taking the last two question one question is sir uh, from sneha raha sir education on traffic and transport is given in school but is not implementing all the rules uh, which should be uh, looked after how can implementation of the rules can be done in better way <laughs> well a good question but probably none of us who are sitting here 
are in a position to do so uh, obviously as at the beginning of the session we have uh, learned that the number of participants are 300 or some kind of figure i have heard i don't know whether in this program or not if it is so then it will be uh, too much to <laughs> handle maybe but even if uh, uh, so uh, actually this question can be best answered by if there is anyone in the participant who is at the chair of policy makers or fact is that this kind of discussions will put some imprint on our mind policy maker in the future being the teachers of the engineering institutes we always keep in hope that our students will be the nation builders in the future also the policy makers and we hope that yes yes there is nothing to hide with, with passage of time with new generation new blood new thinking going into the policy making domain this will definitely change and change for the better one the last question we are taking that is uh, okay that is from soham chakraborty increasing taxes on private cars when the time of buying will lead to reduce the private cars buying ratio will be will it be a remedy for road safety and road traffic problems for the cities in kolkata we have also asked that uh, taxes for private cars will lead to common people to use public transport uh, instead of private ones will it be helpful uh, less road in less road accidents will it be remedy for air pollution also uh, well i think uh, similar uh, th this is almost in line with the first question of the session we have taken in although that was being asked considering the covid situation but mm -hmm. definitely there is no doubt that shifting from private owned vehicles to public mass transport is one of the most in thing in traffic planning concept both from the transportation engineering as well as from the environmental and economic perspective but i actually doubt in the suggestion of the implementation that is being suggested yeah. because forcing something with some negative thought is normally gives rise to an human psychology of disobeying that more i think all of us were students or grown ups at a certain point of time and probably we can tell that among the things that we have learned or imbibed in our daily life i hope majority is those with a negative binding a negative binding should be only implemented when enough positive thoughts are imbibed even with that people are not following what should be done so inst instead of my take will be better to promote the passenger cars public transport in such a way to have that in such a large number to have the road geometries the road construction road maintenance in such a good quality that people will actually prefer that instead of going into their private owned car i am just ending it with one of my personal experience i stay in the locality called as salt lake in calcutta and have my office at yadavpur university i had a own car in my home which starts from a stoppage or its terminal which is 2 minutes walking from my home and at its end terminal at yadavpur 2 minutes walking from my office room with the buses providing very good quality buses including air conditioned buses taking me to my college to almost the same time as required by if i drive with my self driven vehicle actually gives me more impetus to use that public mass transport instead of taking that private transport and taking the botheration of driving self so a positive impetus to public mass transport should be a better alternative rather than a negative debarring to private owned vehicles okay sir uh, one last question we are taking because yes, sure uh, okay okay so on what parameters the model for predicting public risk 
in road traffic should be based on and which weight factors you assign to them well actually uh, this this question is actually a domain of knowledge a domain of implementation it doesn't have a hard and fast specific formula like a pythagorean solution of a right angle triangle it is not like that it is absolutely case specific problem every case in a nutshell need to take into account all parameters including road geometry vehicle character user character the environment aspect surrounding region socio economic characteristics of the people who use the road for whatever purpose it may be every those of the parameters should be taken into account and every problem is a unique problem weight factor should also be assigned based upon the demography socio economic pattern and trans unique equation unique model and can run it everywhere by just putting in some numerical values it is absolutely location to location problem to problem dependent thank you sir uh, for providing such uh, valuable times uh, times and taking all the questions uh, which we, uh, we which we have taken already which have been asked uh, now i am handing over this session to saurabh if there is any announcement is there for the uh, participants uh, uh, saurabh i just have one thing to share uh, with the participants uh, I, i hope they are all, already have my contact details with them Uh, my official email id uh, and so any of the participant if any of them feel to contact me regarding any of these uh, things talked about today or almost anything connected with this traffic safety or pavement engineering everyone is free to welcome any suggestions any queries uh, either i can with the organizers of this program and can have my official e email id and can contact me there thank you so much okay thank you sir uh, okay uh, we are at the end of the session uh, first of all definitely it was not possible uh, to put forward all the courses due to the shortage of time so we apologize for that uh, but now we have to conclude uh, i like i would like to propose hearty vote of thanks to our distinguished speaker dr bitta mait for the last time Uh, i would i would also like to express our profound gratitude to our principal dr onkur ganguly and our hod mr sri kasim for their moral support and guidance i also extend my thanks to the dynamic organizing committee in fact we have been fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very motivated and dedicated people uh, finally the participants we expect your presence and support in our next webinars also uh, as i have already told you that the next webinar is already scheduled on 11th august from 10:30 onwards i will share the details of it in your mail as well as in our youtube description link or our facebook page also uh, i have shared already the feedback form i will also share it in the description of this video when it will get uploaded it will get uploaded within 5 minutes so it will be there also so lastly i am concluding uh, thank you very much Take care. Stay safe. Thank you.